Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Savil's webinar, this time dedicated to the data centers market. Before I begin, I would like to thank to our colleagues Scott Newcomb, Head of EMEA Data Centers at Savils UK, and also to Niraj Karal, Head of Data Centers at Savils India. I would also like to thank our panel of guests that participated uh, in our data centers market report and who will participate in the round table, IP Telecom, Cisco, Luzohed and also Colt. This panel of guests will help us to outline the current scenario in data centers in Portugal and also uh, how Portugal can stand out in this market compared to other international markets. This webinar aims to look at the Portuguese data center and access our growing potential. But first, let's see some interesting numbers. From 26.6% in 2010 to 59% of global population connected in 2020, 6.4 hours online each day per internet user. And by 2026, the size of the global data center market is expected to reach $251 billion and growing at an average annual rate of 4.5%. With the COVID-19 and all the mobility restrictions that it implied to contain the virus, internet traffic considerably increased in March 2020, and regarding only the EMEA region, we saw an increase in traffic ranging from 35% to 19%, which is a very substantial increase in data. The amount of data collected in industry and also commercial business is also increasing very quickly, boosted by the artificial intelligence, the Internet of Things, augmented reality, and blockchain. Also, the deployment of the 5G technology is demanding for a restructuring of data center network architecture. And what are the main drivers? Scale, flexibility, and efficiency. Scale is needed to respond to the growing demand, it's necessary that data centers have to be large enough to adapt to the current needs in terms of space, height and also energy. Flexibility, operators are now looking for larger space that can enable their expansion. Efficiency, as it is an industry that naturally uses up many resources, it's very necessary, necessary and urgent to become more efficiency and environmental friendly. And we can point out the main requirements that a location needs to have in order to receive the implementation of data centers. Power availability, connectivity, safety, efficiency, accessibility, and also expansion. Investors' interest for data centers has been growing over the past five years. The market fundamentals keep getting very strong and very solid. We are expecting a growing demand over the next five years. Occupancy of premises for longer periods of time, long-term income streams, and also security. Most of the existing data stock is owner-occupied, mainly by a few specialized public heights that are dominated in the European market. Also, we are starting to see partnerships, joint ventures and entity acquisitions that will be increasingly used by private investors to enter this very specialized market. Energy and climate control costs represent about 45% of the total energy consumption of a data center. So maintaining an old system can have a huge negative impact on business. It's very strategic and urgent to adapt solutions to reach a sustainable data center model. Data centers in Portugal are mainly consist in small, and microspaces. 
Portuguese companies have been integrated their data centers in their own workplaces to preserve security and also to enable access to data more quickly. But now what we are seeing is a change in the mindset of companies who need data storage space and the data centers are not responding well to these current needs. 46% of all data centers in Portugal are concentrated in the Lisbon region. In Portugal, there are eight main data centers, as we can see in these slides. We have Equinix, Colts, Altis, Nosh, Clarinet, among others. So what are the main key factors that are attracting investments for Portugal? We offer the 22nd fastest fixed internet in the world, according to the speed test of 2020. We also offer a very strategic location in between Africa, America, and also Europe. We are the fourth safest country in the world, according to the Global Peace Index of 2021, and we have a low risk of extreme weather events. We have good diplomatic relations and external connections. We offer the sixth most trusted passport in the world, global connectivity with fiber optic cable connections with South America, Africa, and also Asia. We are the fourth larger producer of solar and wind energy in the world and at the moment we have obsolete existing data centers and very few uh, operators in Portugal. What about connectivity coverage? Portugal is strengthening its strategic position in accommodating subsea cables with a capacity far more superior to the existing ones and with direct routes to important markets. Portugal presents itself as a fast and direct connection to Africa and South America, connecting these markets to the rest of Europe. Portugal also have a submarine communications cable system so, that, so it can connect uh, this system to other countries in Europe, through UK and through France. At the moment, there are four projects in pipeline. In Sines, we have a new data center that is being developed by Star Campus and should have a capacity of up to 450 megawatts from renewable energies. Also, in Carregado, Merlin Properties and Edge Energy are building a data center with a capacity of 20 megawatts. FCT, in collaboration with the City Council of Guimarães, is promoting the installation of a data center. And finally, the APDL project plans to create its first data center classified as Tier 3. So, what are the main takeaways? Data center market in Portugal is establishing itself on the map of Europe. The growing news of the Internet of Things and the future switch to 5G technology will increase demand for data and for data center services in Portugal. So we are witnessing an increase in demand for knowledge regarding these market segments. And Portugal, with good connectivity, access to energy and security, will for sure attract more investments for data centers. So now I would like to welcome my colleagues from Savills, Niraj Karal, the head of data centers at uh, Savills India, and also Scott Newcomb, the head of EMEA data centers at Savills UK. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, I'm Niraj Karale. I head data center services for Savills in India. I'm based out of Mumbai, which is a financial capital here. If I'm to talk about Indian data center market, you know, it has been growing tremendously. We are, we are witnessing a boom. The market that was hovering around a data center capacity of 500 megawatt IT load is slated to see almost doubling of the, that capacity in within next two years. And if I am to look at the pipeline that is coming across or coming online, 
within next uh, four to five years, you know, we are looking at a capacity of almost thousand megawatts. And this is all, you know, the co-location capacity that I'm talking about. If I'm to look at the captive deployments, you know, the data center development by cloud service providers or the Indian government bodies, then the number is even higher. We have seen entry of almost all the major global data center operators in recent times. Um, the, in the, the data center industry growth rate, which hovers around you know, 6%, 9%, even 3% in certain cases. For India, you know, that growth rate is 12% annual. Now, one would wonder, you know, what had happened in India that that you know there is so much of a growth that is happening in this industry, and that too, you know, the, the deployments are doubling almost in intervals of two to three years. Um, firstly, there were you know a couple of interventions by the Indian government which are responsible for that. Uh, the, the primary intervention was the data localization policy. Our central bank, which is RBI, mandated all the banks, whether those are local or international, the data related to Indian had, Indians had to be stored within the country. You know, this is commonly also known as data sovereignty. Um, Indian government also introduced a lot of policies. Uh, they in fact started a mission named Digital India, uh, which is enabling almost all the government processes, documentation to be carried out online. The other reason, you know, outside of government uh, is, is of course the Indian population that is, that is humongous, um, but you know, that, that Majority of that population, almost around 560 million, in the, you know, users are online nowadays. Here, uh, India has the largest user base for social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and the other reasons are, you know, the growing adoption of uh, e-commerce, edtech companies, and digital payments. Uh, the key trends that we are watching for, and these these trends are also applicable for your market, the Portugal data center market. Uh, firstly, uh, is is adoption of uh, renewable power. Almost all of the data center operators here have pledged that you know they will they will do a migration to renewable energy almost to an extent of fifty to hundred uh, percent. Secondly, uh, you know, what we are seeing is increasing interest in edge data centers, you know, the company data center players wanting to go as close to their customers. And, uh, you know, for this, they are, they are also banking on upcoming implementation of 5G, adoption of artificial intelligence and automation across. Now, if I'm to talk about factors that are in favor of Portugal data center market, uh, firstly, what I can mention is its location. You know, it's strategically located between US, Africa, and Europe. And of course, it can serve as a bridge to connectivity to Asia as well. Almost 78% population of Portugal is online. That will definitely create a lot of demand for data storage, data processing within your country. Um, and lastly, um, and, and more so, uh, the reason is, uh, you know, the stringent policies of European Union. Um, European unions have, in fact, the, the most uh, rigid policies towards data localization, data privatization. Um, we have seen the governments are very proactive in terms of, you know, uh, abusive policies of social media giants. So with that, I could end my comments.
hoping that you all will benefit out of this webinar. All the best and take care. Bye. Thank you very much for the presentation, Niraj. My name is Scott Newcomb, and I lead the Savills Data Center Advisory Team in EMEA. Over the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to give a brief overview on our view on the European data center market, how it's changing, uh, and where we see new growth. So as we know, the European data center capacity tends to be clustered around key cities. Historically, they've been what we call the flat markets, which is Frankfurt, London, Amsterdam, and Paris. Latterly, uh, Dublin's really come to the fore, and that's primarily around the density of interconnection that we see in each of those markets. Together, those regions account for over 1.4 million square meters of data center space, and that goes to highlight just how big a market they are. We're continuing to see demand from the cloud computing companies, the hyperscalers, the driving growth across the region. And although there was reduced supply in 2020, primarily due to the COVID pandemic, shortages of materials, shortage of supply, demand was still at a record high. And we expect that demand to increase further in the coming year. As we see, there's almost 400 megawatts of new supply to come online in 2021, and that really demonstrates um, the demand that we're seeing in the market. What we do know is that high demand lowers availability across the flat D regions, and that drives interest in second tier markets as they're currently defined, such as Madrid, Rome, Warsaw, to name a few examples. Cloud providers want to deliver their services locally and again, we see that as a key driver for growth in regions outside of that core flat D market. So I wanted to highlight some of the key trends that we see in 2021. As I've said, we can see the continued demand of the hyperscalers. Cloud and content services need to be distributed more widely across European markets outside of that flat core flat D region. We see a focus on construction in those secondary markets and we're seeing huge amounts of activity in Portugal, Spain, Italy, Poland, and Switzerland, formerly quite quiet markets that we now see there's real interest in. And for the first time in as long as I've been in the market, the majority of growth in new data center development is going to come from markets that are outside of that flat D region. And the market anticipates that that split is something like 54% of new construction being in those new markets. And we continue to see mergers and acquisitions and the context that was highlighted by the recent deal between digital realty and interaction, which was around $9.6 billion. So I want to talk about a few of the challenges that we see in the data center market currently at a high level. Power availability has really come to the fore and it's a concern now in most of the key European markets. We see that reflected in the restriction of access to power in some of those core markets with Amsterdam, Frankfurt and Dublin being good examples of that where local authorities or governments are really trying to slow down the development of data centers to reassess the power that's available to residential, commercial, as well as the data center market. Speed to market continues to be a challenge. Um, finding land, finding power, securing power is, is always key. Um, and the supply simply can't be brought online quickly enough to service the demands of some of the cloud and hyperscalers. We see a focus on sustainability and key areas within that that are under review of developing greener power, provision of greener power, data hall redesign to make more efficient use of power and water. And it's a continuing challenge for data center operators. GDPR continues to be at the forefront. Many compute and data storage services that used to be delivered from outside of the EU have to now sit within country that in itself drives some demand within those regions. And we see an ever increase in power density demand from occupiers. They want to do more with less. They really want to sweat their data center assets. And that's forcing the evolution of a design and construction. I wanted to touch very quickly on subsea cables. Um, they're a key component within the data center market. And this year we're seeing probably more subsea cable projects being completed than ever before. As we know, subsea cables support the transfer of global traffic, and that enables cloud 
platform and content streaming gaming to improve the services that they're delivering locally to reduce that latency as well as bringing intercontinental traffic through that various region cable landing stations uh, often provide a transit hub and as yet with these new cable deployments we're unsure as to some of them will be pure transit or some of them will generate a data center market in its own right that said historically subsea landing locations are developed into major data center hubs and we can use marseille as a good example of that what was one small data center of around 500 kilowatts with maybe 15 carriers in a few short years is transferred into four large-scale data centers with nearly 200 carriers, cloud providers, streaming and content and services running from it. What we do know, though, is traffic equals data center demand. So I want to talk about some of the indicators that we see for this migration, this growth into new regions away from the flat D markets. We see an increased use of platforms such as cloud and social media. So data growth, users using more data in that region. Very often we see that the existing data center capacity is insufficient for the perceived demand or for the forward demand. CDNs often enter those markets early, early and that's a very clear indicator for us that that market is going to develop. Alongside that, we see the carrier expand, expanding into the region, whether that be terrestrial land or subsea networks. They're very often at the forefront of supplying the connectivity required for the cloud content uh, businesses. We look at hyperscale cloud providers who look to deploy edge nodes so they can get into a market early. Um, and there's also often outside, outside of the region interest in investment in construction. And we see that from providers of key infrastructure components. We see it from investors. We see it from construction organizations. What does the next tier market supply look like in these, in these regions? And again, this is at a very high level. More often than not, the local data center demand is very small. It tends to come from regional government. It tends to come from uh, institutions such as health, some small finance, local enterprise. It tends to be a very small number of carrier neutral facilities, um, with most of them being operated by telcos or like managed hosting companies or uh, serviced hosting companies. There's a limited number of international operators present in that given market as it's such a new market and that in itself lends to a lack of wholesale data center provision. What we see generally in these markets is that as the demand grows, the definition between those small scale carrier pops, the telco facilities and true co-location or wholesale data centers is defined. Just before I sum up, um, given the audience of this webinar, I wanted to cover how some of these aspects can uh, affect the Portuguese market specifically. So going back to my previous slides on market indicators, Portugal definitely ticks a lot of those boxes. It matches that criteria really well. Taking a step back, a key metric directly connected to the increase in data consumption is deploy deployment of terrestrial fiber, something which we've seen and has been prominent across the Portuguese market in the last couple of years. So land-based broadband to the household is very much a key driver for the consumption of data. We couple that with the completion of the several additional subsea cables that we know are landing in Portugal in the coming months and years. And it makes Portugal prime for carriers, content, cloud, streaming, gaming companies to commence the deployment of nodes, scale data centers. There's clearly a shortage of supply at the moment from international data center operators in the Portuguese market. And this represents a huge opportunity for investors and operators as there'll be an urgent demand for co-location and scale facilities as those guys enter the market. And in fact, there's only one international operator present at the moment, and that's not a wholesale site. So we can expect to see major interest from operators, global operators uh, in the growing market. Ultimately, all of this is going to be driven by increased user consumption of data, content, streaming, gaming, which then in turn pushes the companies that supply those services to deliver a local solution. So just to quickly summarize, the EMEA market is still growing at high rates, demand is at a record high, supply is increasing, and that's being driven by the cloud content and gaming community. 
platforms, cloud, are yet to enter secondary markets with scale deployments, albeit they very much have an eye on those next tier markets, such as Portugal, Switzerland, other areas of Spain, and so on. These secondary markets, the metro areas within core regions, have got huge growth potential, massively underserved currently, um, and there's a great opportunity for investors and operators to develop in those markets. We know that subsea cables are going to drive new connectivity super hubs. I'd go back to my Marseille example. Very small data center has now turned into a, a scale campus with all kinds of cloud services deployments within them. And critically, the majority of new EMEA growth in 2021 is going to come from those emerging markets. Thank you for your time. I hope you've enjoyed the webinar. Thank you for joining us on this webinar on the data center Portuguese market. I would like also to thank you to our panel and to all the support they gave us along uh, this way. Introducing uh, everyone we have with us, André Rodrigues, System Engineer Leader and CTO at Cisco, Paul Telch, Sales Engineer at Colt, Alberto Passos, Telecommunications Business Director at IP Telecom, and João Fonseca, Commercial Director at Luzorrede. Thank you for being with us. I hope you enjoy this with us. So, moving into the discussion, um, uh, I would like to start with a question open to, to, to all the panel. That is to understand how is Portugal currently positioned as a data center um, destination? And probably I would start on my right um, and we would move along having the opinion of everyone, how do you see our, our market? Okay, so I should be first. So, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Um, and answering to your question, I think that we are doing good, but we could do it better, okay? And I'll explain why. We are doing good because the technical decision makers and the business um, decision makers, leaders, already understood that one size doesn't fit all, so we need not only giant public data centers, but also edge data center and more local data centers. And because of that, recently in the last uh, few years, we are seeing investment on those data centers in Portugal. And that's why I think that we are doing good. I think that we could do better for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first one is because we have the talent in Portugal. So we have the people to manage and operate those data centers. We have the infrastructure, so we, we have um, the fiber, we have the connectivity to connect the, those data centers to the rest of the world. We are a secure country, meaning that the data that people are going to put in Portuguese data center are secure. And uh, for those reasons, I think that Portugal can, can only benefit and attract more data centers to Portugal. Thank you. Paul. Yes, uh, taking Andre's words, so I think mainly he said, he said it all. So I think there is also the part of sustainability and the green energy. Uh, I'm not an expert in that area. I don't know if we are well located uh, in, that, in that area, but I think we are doing good. And, and as Andre said, we have good fiber co coverage of the, the country. So uh, we have uh, good infrastructures in, them, in terms of telecommunications. And we have uh, also the skills of the people because Today, the, the data center market is changing. It's, uh, it's, it's high technology, technology, so you need also people skilled to support it. Okay, so I see okay. we are doing good. Very good. Alberto. <coughs> Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I, I would say that it's, uh, we, have, we have sensed in the last, in the last two couple of years uh, a strong, um, uh, stronger requirements for uh, connections, intercontinental connections from Portugal. And it's my belief and, and my organization believes that Portugal does have a, a very good position to uh, establish intercont intercontinental uh, connections to Africa, to South America and maybe to the South of North America. And that makes a lot of sense because in some of these areas, the, 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 the data center infrastructure is, and, uh, and the infrastructure as a whole is not so good. And it makes sense to have a strong or a big data center close to the tip, to the, to the point where you are making the, the jump or the connection to uh, markets that are still a little bit green 
which cannot offer the same conditions as we have here, with uh, not only the optical fiber that we have a very, very good coverage, but also in terms of energy, there are no power down, there are no such problems. Security is also good for the, for the people that came here to, to work. So we, we, I think we do have a, a very good, a good position to, to carry on on growing on the data centers, indeed. Yes. Sure. Well, I'm the last, and I don't have so much things to, to add, but maybe uh, I want to, to focus in a very uh, important um, uh, point that is the we have a moderate climate. It means that we have very good conditions to have a, a, a data center with um, Taking, care, uh, taking advantage of, for example, to have uh, fresh nights every, every, uh, every night. It means that we can take, for example, advantage of free cooling uh, technology or, uh, and also uh, we don't have, uh, like in other uh, countries, uh, the, the cost of the land to high. So it means that we have low cost of land with moderate climate and, of course, like Andrea said, secure, with no risk of political or uh, most uh, disaster uh, uh, like uh, tornadoes or uh, earthquakes and, and so on. So we, we are not a risk country, so we have to take uh, advantage of that. Thank you very much, João. So I now will address the questions to Paulo Tels from Colt. How can the large, uh, recent and pipeline investment in high-speed undersea cables boost the interest for the Portuguese market? Yes, I think the, the, the data center markets and the, the subsea cables market can be together. As Alberto said, if, if you end a good connection here as a, in a subsea cable, maybe <laughs> it makes sense also to build a data center there. That is what is happening in Sines. And, and they have good conditions there to build a data center with green energy. So I think with that example, you can think in other places in, in, in the Portuguese coast where you could have a subsea cable and also build uh, other data centers. Obvi obviously, this is a, sometimes this is, it's a political decision. I know that it was important in the, when we choose scenes, we were ahead of the European Commission. So it was important for the decision, so this is, must be worked in, in several directions. But uh, I think both are together. So y y if, if you learn from this example, you then can replicate this example and then you can bring more cables to Portugal and you can build more, more data centers. Okay, okay so I, I will take um, on your words about, about Sinj um, and uh, address my question to, to Alberto. And taking things, for example, in the 3.5 euros, uh, billion of euros that have been invested by DK on creating an hyperscale data center in, in Sinj to take advantage of that. This has put the Portuguese market under the, the, the spotlight. Is this the first step to establish Portugal as a destination for data centers? How do you see it in, in the future? <coughs> yeah, I would say that it, it, it is definitely a, a milestone in the, in the Portuguese uh, scenario, because such an investment, uh, such a, a facility, will uh, um, leverage a, a lot more investments and a lot more of potential. In, in our part, uh, IP Telecom is one of the biggest suppliers of optical fiber here in Portugal. And thinking about Sinj too, we are now uh, at the process of comple completing our fourth interconnection to Spain, which will be at the Guadiana uh, Bridge. So that will be the, the, the fourth connection that we'll have. And the idea is obviously to cover the south of the, of the peninsula and thinking about going up to Lisbon and then you have a stop at Sinj. And in fact, that will be, uh, and that can be a, a game changer because uh, in most cases, as we know, every time that you have a, a, a substantial or a big uh, submarine cable a landing station, you have generally one or two big data centers around. So, And uh, one thing generally comes with the other. It's not the same promoter that does the, the both at the same time. It's like an a, a ecosystem of, of the business because uh, the cables bring, bring more, 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 more uh, international operators and most of the case they need a place to rest or to stay 
nearby to put their, their own equipment, and that's the, the, the idea. Uh, we have had a recently, in last June, a, a big company making the, the first dedicated cable from, from uh, Sines to, 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 to Brazil. And I do believe that it will be a very, that, that investment that has been announced uh, on the 23 of April, last April, will be definitely a milestone in the Portuguese data center market, for, for sure, for sure. Thank you, uh, Alberto. Uh, André, what do you think will change with the 5G technology fully implemented? What will be the main positives, the expected impacts over this technology? That's, that's a very good question. So, 5G, it's not the holy grail, okay? <laughs> but uh, it will help a lot. And, and I'll try to explain why. Because 5G, 5G networks are built with uh, a few premises, uh, being the first one, uh, speed, okay? the second one, reliability, and the third one, uh, low latency. Mm -hmm. And if you think of these three features, plus the idea of connecting virtually everything, so people, devices, machines, things, and if you combine this, the, the high speed, the low latency, the reliability with virtually connected everything, you then, you then untap uh, a new opportunity for new services that were not possible with 4G and uh, other technologies, okay? With those new services, like augmented reality or uh, virtual reality or uh, self-driving or autonomous vehicles, whatever, you need to process data, okay? And that data needs to be processed in a data center. And if you want to have speeds and you want, if you want to have low latency, you cannot afford to send your data to be processed several thousand kilometers away from where the, the action is happening. Otherwise, instead of turning left, the bus turns right and you have a crash. <laughs> so because of that, we believe that 5G with edge computing or with local uh, computing, lo local data centers are going to be hand to hand and is going to be a successful combination. Thank you. Um, getting back to João, um, and I would like to ask you, what are the technical requirements that you consider fundamental for the selection of a data center site? How do you see it? What are the key drivers to select? Okay. We already spoke about um, natural um, uh, points that we should consider, like, uh, for example, a low uh, level of risk for uh, disaster, natural disasters. So we should avoid, of course, uh, to be near the rivers or because of flood risks, or uh, to be in a, in a place where, uh, for example, we have uh, tornadoes and, and uh, natural uh, disasters. Uh, well, in Portugal, we don't have that risk. Of course, near the rivers you have, but we don't uh, should uh, uh, we, we should not uh, choose a, a, a near uh, a river to, to install a, a data center. Uh, another uh, question is uh, that it's very important. It's uh, uh, the the location uh, close for a good accesses. It means uh, we should consider that uh, the time of response of the technical teams the cost of uh, d uh, transportation, the cost of uh, to, to, uh, to arrive to the data center, it's uh, a key point that customers and also the technical uh, dis uh, decision should be take uh, care because uh, we cannot put a, a data center three hours from the big cities because <coughs> Area, uh, it, it's very important. Uh, also, we have to, good, to have a good uh, highways, to good transportation uh, in order to, to arrive very quick to the data center. So it's, uh, it's a key point in my opinion. Of course, uh, to be near uh, the power plants, to, or um, it's very important to have guarantee of uh, sufficient power and also a redundant grid of power because we cannot be dependent of one source of power. 
uh, the same about the, the carriers. So we have good fiber services, but it's important to guarantee that we have redundant paths to the fibers, redundant carriers, otherwise we, we lose in uh, reliability and, uh, of the data center. So, um, and of course, we have also uh, uh, the, the, the question that uh, I already uh, spoke, it's uh, the, the location, it depends, for example, if we choose uh, west, west Coast, we take advantage of uh, the uh, moderate cli uh, climate. It's very important to put the data center in a, in a place very dry or too hot or too cold. We have big advantages because uh, power, it's the main issue in terms of cost of a data center. So we have to reduce that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that point. Thank you very much, to João. It, uh, it is an interesting checklist <laughs> for the implementation of a data center. And now I will address the, the question to you all. Um, what is your outlook for the segment in Portugal for the coming years? And also, what are the strengths, the positives, the challenges that we present uh, as a destination for data centers? I will start with you, André. Okay. So I think that, in a way, we already touched most yes, of those several, points, yes. okay, so, and I don't want to, to say it all again, and then mm -hmm. my colleagues will say that I said it, okay, <laughs> but uh, even though, uh, I will say that we are in a, in a good momentum, I think that we are mm -hmm. still on the, the edge of that momentum, so we are starting that momentum, and hopefully with the help of all the stakeholders here and many others, in, in Portugal, we will keep that, uh, that momento uh, as long as we can and uh, hopefully we will bring more, more data center business to, to Portugal. Yeah, so my, my, my only, my, my doubt about that is, the, so now the edge data center, so how, what, what's going to happen on, with the, the, the edge data center market? So uh, the 5G, as, as André uh, already spoke about, will boost a lot of new services that will be provided from the edge with less latency, things that we cannot provide today. So there will be a need of infrastructures more close to, to the end user. Okay, so that will make the edge data center start to, to, to begin. People say it's in, it's in 2022 that will start to, to, to explode. And I would say that if that's going to happen, I think we are in a good position because we have a good fiber density coverage inside the country. We have skilled people. So if we if we if we use the momentum, I think we can we can perform well in that. Yeah, in we that have space. the full package. Yes, <laughs> yes indeed. Uh, <clears throat> I would stress what I have just said before, which is, uh, I think that in our, my organization we do think that Portugal is very well positioned to uh, have more connections to the to the Africa and to South America, which by the way is not so well connected as that. Because we, we know that from North Europe to North to North America to Virginia Beach to Massachusetts, there's a lot of, of brand new cables being put with a with a with a high capacity. Also from Bilbao and also from the eastern coast coast of, of France. But they don't go to, to Africa, they don't go to the South the, to the South America of the United North. I'm sorry, to the, uh, the south part of the United States of America, they go to the north, not to the south. They don't go to Miami, etc. They don't go that way. And also to Africa. We have recently seen some, some, some major investments here. It's a cable going from here to Cape Town, which is arriving at, 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 at Zimbra. Um, and uh, another one at Singe. We are also uh, signing a contract with a, with a customer, which is customer of the, of, of the, of the cables. We have signed two, 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 two contracts this, 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 this second semester as far as now and it's going good because we do, what is our role in this is, is uh, assuring uh, that there's a high, high bandwidth and high availability optical fiber which is uh, running on three uh, interconnection points alongside the border with Spain. The fourth is, is, is now coming alive in the next one and a half months. And so we, we can do, we can do, sorry, we, we, we can provide uh, optical fiber as we have been providing for the last 20 years to any customer in all the, 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 the locations that as far as now we have been studying. So we, we can do that 
and I hope for, for the good of the nation and the, for all, all of us that these, the, all these investments uh, keep going on and, and have a, a strong, strong commitment on that and uh, with our customers and partners. Well, well uh, I, you, you told, uh, we already spoke uh, most of the, mm -hmm. the most important things, but maybe uh, uh, I, I want to introduce one, one, one idea that maybe it's a wrong idea, that is the, the data centers uh, have uh, a big power uh, consuming and it's, uh, it's a problem in the future. Well. Uh, from last 10 years, uh, what we uh, see is that the power consuming of the data centers, uh, it, it, it remains the same because uh, we have much more uh, well-designed uh, data centers, much more efficient in terms of design. We also have uh, equi equipments that are... Um, created and developed to have more, less uh, power consuming. So the, the servers, all the equipments are more intelligent in terms of power consuming. And also because when we have customers that bring the equipments and the servers from the local uh, um, IT rooms, we, without any uh, power control or without any uh, equipment that are developed to uh, uh, to be uh, efficient, when they bring the equipments to the data centers or the, when they move from local to to the cloud, the power uh, energy becomes much uh, smaller than if they keep in that data center. So. The, the result of that is that uh, globally we have less power consuming, we have uh, less uh, um, resources uh, with the data centers. If we uh, look for a, a window of 10 years, we, we don't have more uh, consuming, about, uh, however we have maybe every two years the double of uh, data and uh, in the last two years, uh, because of the streaming, because of the COVID, uh, we have much more uh, uh, data uh, in the internet uh, because of the video conferencing. The, the, uh, 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 we have, have much more traffic. However, we don't have more consuming, the power consuming. The power consuming of data centers, it's worldwide, it's about 1% of the all power Consuming, uh, considering the in industry and the and the domestic uh, consuming. Thank you, João. I think I w we still have time for one more question, and this is a, a question that I address to you all. How do you see the population growth perspective, namely from Asia and also Africa, and what uh, to what extent? it will contribute to the increase of the data centers markets and how can Portugal take advantage in the future of this growth? André? Again, I'll start. <laughs> or right. anyone wants to start? No, I'll be brief because I, I'm not uh, an SME, a subject matter expert on growth mm -hmm. population, okay? But, um, but to me, and if we take into consideration what, what we all said during these last 25 minutes or so, I think it, it, it is obvious that we have an opportunity, especially to address the African market, okay? And uh, probably the South American market, more than the Asian one, because I think it's too far. And uh, there is still something that is the speed of light, and it will, uh, it will be difficult to, to address that market. But honestly, I think that there are markets that are growing and that can be addressed from Portugal, and definitely Africa is one of those, and the second one should be South, South America. Thank you, Paul. I, I can use a, a concrete example uh, and that can be repli replicated. So mm -hmm. we at Colt, we work with a, an African operator that is based in Nigeria and they, they, they want to, to expand their network in Europe. Uh, and they, their headquarter is at London. But as they land at Seychelles, they start to speak with us here. And now it's 
it's called locally that controls the relationship with the, with this this operator. So, and and now we are developing the, the the other way around. So now they can also be the extension of our network to Africa, as long as Africa starts to to develop in terms of infrastructures of telecommunications. So. We are trying to, to explore now the, the, the relationship in, in two ways. At the beginning, they, they come to us and we are helping them to extend their network to, 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 to the Europe. But we are controlling the relationship with, the, with them. It's not UK that is controlling, it's, it's locally controlled. And on the other way, now internally at Colt, we are trying to certify them as a provider to, to, to Africa. And, and we are trying to leverage this partnership. And obviously, this can be replicated to other operators, not just for Africa, for South America and for other geographies where the connectivity of those cables uh, ends in, in Portugal. Thank you. Albert? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I would say that um, quite opt optimistic because, uh, as, as our colleagues said, uh, for Asia, it's a little bit far away from here, but not for Africa and South, and, and South America, which is very close uh, to Portugal. And so... What I do think, and I, we have experienced it in the last two years, a lot, a lot of, of, of solicitations for, not solicitations, requirements and asking for uh, offers, optical fiber to connect Europe to uh, future probable data centers along the coast. Basically from Sinch to, to Lisbon, is, this is the, the area that we are talking about. And the, 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 the aim is, is the same. So jumping or reinforcing the connections to, to Africa. For instance, uh, we, are, we are having, last December, it entered in, in service, one of the biggest optical fiber optical sub submarine cables going around, uh, circumnavigating all the Africa, and then they go from Gibraltar and they stop here in Lisbon, then go to London. So it's always a, a point for making a, a connection like a hub. As we have a hub for the, for the airplanes, we can have a hub, and I hope so. And we are doing all, all the best we can, not just us, all, all, all that are in this, in this room, to make this become, become true, which is to make Portugal the, 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 the gateway to, uh, to, South, to South America and the gateway to, to Africa. And of course, because especially Africa is still a little bit, not a little bit, but substantial, we'll have a, a, a much bigger growth in, in, a, in a close future with, with all the social networking, etc. And, so, and they will need a lot of, of data centers. And, and I hope some of them will stay here. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> we have the conditions for that. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We have a, 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 a geographic location that is uh, strategic uh, yeah. uh, considering Africa. Because Africa, it's a, a very... Um, difficult continent in terms of uh, political stability. It means that uh, we we participate in the uh, the uh, in the cable to uh, South Africa. We did the installation in Sazimbra for uh, PT, yeah. the the data center, and uh, uh, I learned that uh, one of the reasons is because. Uh, during the, the way to, uh, till uh, South Africa, there is no such safe pl uh, places in order to make uh, intermediate uh, uh, connections. So they prefer to use the Portugal and then the Islands to make the, the, the repeaters of the, the signal to, to South Africa. It, it means that the instability of the continent uh, it's uh, it's uh, an issue that uh, Africa has nowadays, but they need the, the, the they need the connection. So the, they will need the data center in a safe place where they don't have any risk of any any uh, political yes. or uh, that, risk. That's our opportunity. It's our opportunity, of course. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Juan. Well. So, I'd like to thank you all for this time. I know that there was a lot more to, yes. to discuss and to, and to debate, but let's look at this just like the, the beginning. Um, I thank you all for your support and for your time. Uh, thank you for being with us. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this minute. Uh, we will be here to help you and assist you any further query that you might have. Uh, Savos will be glad to assist you and we will keep our work within the data center segment. Uh, which seems that we'll have uh, thrilling years uh, in front of us. Thank you. <laughs>